Thank you for your interest in the IEDB. My name is Nima Salimi and I'm part of the IEDB team. In this short video, my colleagues and I will give you a behind the scenes look at the process of populating the IEDB with data. Peer reviewed publications are one of the primary sources of the data in the IEDB. A team of scientists called curators read and systematically extract the relevant information from these publications. This process is called curation. But before the curation process begins, the papers that are potentially relevant to the current IEDB scope, including infectious diseases, autoimmunity, and allergy, need to be identified from over 27 million publications cataloged in PubMed. This task is led by IEDB document specialist, Lindy Edwards. Lindy, can you please provide us a brief overview of this process? Sure. We've created a customized PubMed query that is run on a bi-weekly basis. The retrieved records are analyzed by an automated text classifier to identify any records that are unlikely to contain information that is relevant to the IEDB, known as uncuratable. The potentially curatable papers are sorted into broad categories and subcategories. For example, allergen pollen or infectious disease pox viruses. At this point, the potentially curatable abstracts are manually scanned by a senior immunologist on the team to confirm the accuracy of the classifier. We also rely on input from our users in order to make sure that we haven't missed anything. Thanks, Lindy. In the next step, this list of papers enters the curation pipeline, where the curators will read and extract the data. The papers are assigned to curators based on the nature of the data described in the paper. For example, we have curators who specialize in curating papers describing non-peptidic epitopes, 3D structures, and papers reporting T-cell or B-cell receptor information. To capture the relevant data from the papers, each curator uses a web-based data entry portal consisting of both free text and controlled value data fields that help ensure data consistency. Debbie Shackelford, one of our IEDB senior curators, will now take us on a brief tour of the curation process using the curation system. Thank you, Nima. The curation aims to objectively represent all the data that meet minimal IEDB inclusion criteria. To demonstrate the types of information extracted for the IEDB, the following paper is used as an example. In it, the authors use a conserved epitope found in the membrane proximal stem of influenza virus hemagglutinin and express it in a virus-like particle and then determine if it's sufficiently immunogenic to induce broadly neutralizing antibodies. I've highlighted two key words that are in the PubMed query Lindy just described that was used to identify the paper. The data entry process begins by adding a single epitope. The epitope structure, whether peptidic or non-peptidic, must be clearly provided in the manuscript or in a reference. Figure 1 in the paper provides a sequence of the 20 amino acid peptide found in the hemagglutinin of the 1918 flu. The epitope sequence is entered into the epitope field of the IEDB curation application. Each naturally occurring epitope is then assigned a source. The edit link accesses the molecule finder, which is used to find sources with 100% sequence match to the epitope. The molecule finder contains a subset of the entries you would find in GenBank and is continually amended as new sources are needed. In this case, multiple GenBank accessions contain the epitope sequence and the most appropriate is chosen. Once an epitope has been added, details summarizing the assays in which the epitope reactivity are tested are captured. In this case, a B cell assay is used to capture antibody reactivity by ELISA. The assay details fields follow the temporal flow of the experiment, beginning with the host and immunization details, including the immunogen, the dose, and additional details, followed by the type of assay utilized, the assayed antibody, and the antigen used to elicit the response in the assay. There are custom sets of fields for B cell, T cell, MHC binding, and ligand elution assays. Additional details, such as MHC restriction and antibody isotype and sequencing, are also included when available in the manuscript. Automated validation based on relationships between data fields is extensively incorporated throughout the system in order to alert the curator of errors in real time. But once all of the information has been curated, the data can be advanced to our peer review stage. Thanks, Debbie. 
As Debbie mentioned, an important final step in the curation workflow is the internal peer review process. Randy Vida, the IBB Quality Control Manager, will provide an overview of this process. Once a curator has entered all of the data for a given publication, the record is sent to peer review, where a senior curator rereads the same paper again and reviews how that data was entered into the IDB's curation interface. We do this to ensure consistency across all of the different publications and among all of our different curators, following established IDB creation guidelines. In addition to manual review, we also have interfield validation that's built into the creation interface itself. This validation checks for things like consistency among fields, for example, if the curator accidentally entered a greater number of subjects responding than were tested, you would get a validation error that looks like this. Both the curator and the reviewer can see these validation errors, and they must be resolved in order to promote any reference to the external website. Once the curator and the reviewer agree on how the data was entered and all of the validation errors are resolved, the data is then made public. Upon passing these quality assurance and quality check steps, the data are made publicly visible in the IABB website. The homepage provides summary metrics detailing the type and amount of data available. We always welcome your questions at help at IEDB.org. Thanks again for your interest in the IEDB.